Good morning. On behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport, welcome to the graduation ceremony for Officer Development Honor School, Class 24010, consisting of 170 officers. Led by class team, Lieutenant Catherine Pardue, myself, Lieutenant Micaela Barter, Chief Fire Controlman Daniel Thomas, and Chief Quartermaster Miguel Galarza. Military guest in uniform, this will be a covered ceremony. The order of events for this morning ceremony are as follows. Captain Everett Alcorn, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command Newport, and Rear Admiral Darren By, Acting Surgeon General of the Navy, will arrive shortly. The guests in class will rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem and invocation. Captain Alcorn and Rear Admiral By will then address the graduating class. Following their remarks, Captain Alcorn will distribute the class awards and graduates will symbolize the completion of their training by returning their respective company guidons to their class chief petty officers. The class will then reaffirm the oath of office and will remain standing for the playing of the service song and the final dismissal. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and invocation. Officer Training Command, Newport, arriving. <laughs> Acting Surgeon General of the Navy, arriving. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Chaplain Everts will now offer the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, strong to save, we give you our thanks for binding the restless waves within each of these newly trained naval officers so they could stand proud this day for becoming morally, mentally, and physically developed for the service of our fleet. As they prepare for their next evolution in their communities, Remind them what it means to be a leader and to serve with a purpose. Let them embody humility and selflessness. Remind them to value every sailor and civilian they cross paths with each day. Impress upon them the initiative, integrity, accountability, and toughness needed to do the right thing, especially when it's difficult. Embolden them to have ownership of what they are called to do, even when they are called into harm's way. So as these officers look to the horizon, prepare them for the challenges that lie ahead. 
giving them the physical, mental, and spiritual readiness to meet each one with confidence. And as we continue to celebrate this moment, we ask for your spirit to reside with us and all those who stand to watch this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Everett Alcorn, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command, Newport. Admiral Vi, Admiral McLean, Captain Baker, Captain William, Captain Stewart, Colonel Krausen, Colonel Zalmany, distinguished visitors, veterans, service members, Officer Training Command staff, shipmates and friends, and Officer Development School Class 23090. Good morning. Good morning, sir. It's an absolute honor for me to have this opportunity to welcome this class into one of the most prestigious, challenging, and rewarding careers in this nation, that of a Naval Officer. Today we will bear witness as 169 officers renew a solemn promise to our nation, reaffirming their oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. For the families joining us, I want to both thank you and commend you for the performance of your sons and daughters, husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, friends. Your love, support, and encouragement have produced the quality individuals seated here, ones that chose a path of service to their fellow citizen. I can think of no finer group to go forth into the fleet than the officers seated here today, and they could not have gotten to this point without the careful guidance and support of family. On behalf of the Navy and a grateful nation, please accept my most sincere thank you. To the class, I'm proud of each and every one of you and all that you've accomplished while you were here. As you depart for schools and duty stations, know that you're about to be placed in a position to lead and mentor what are truly one of our most valuable national products the enlisted men and women of the U.S. Navy. Foundations we have laid here at Officer Development School are solid. It is now up to you to build upon this as you enter Naval service. I'm very impressed with the effort you've expended over the last several weeks. I want to thank you for all that you have done and will do in service of this great nation of ours, and I look forward to witnessing your future successes. It is my pleasure and distinct honor to welcome you to the wardroom as professional Naval officers in the world's finest Navy. It is my privilege this morning to introduce you to our guest of honor, Rear Admiral Darren Vi, Acting Surgeon General. Admiral Vi is a native of Illinois. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Millican University. He enlisted in the U.S. Navy Reserve in 1985 as a hospital corpsman, and in 1987 he entered active duty as an ensign at the Uniformed Services University of the Health Science, where he earned a Doctor of Medicine in 1991. He completed a Master's of Healthcare Delivery Science from Dartmouth College in 2014. His professional training includes transitional internship and anesthesiology residency at the National Naval Medical Center and a trauma anesthesia fellowship at the Adams Cowley Shock Trauma Center at the University of Maryland. He's qualified as an undersea and diving medical officer. He's held numerous leadership positions within the American Society of Anesthesiologists and the Uniformed Services Society of Anesthesiologists. He served in various positions throughout the Navy medicine to include Chairman of the Department of Anesthesiology, Director for Surgical Services, Deputy Commander, and Commanding Officer of Naval Medical Center Portsmouth. Operation, he's also served with Mobile Diving and Salvage Unit 2 aboard the USNS Comfort, at Fleet Hospital 3 First Force Service Support Group, Camp Viper, Iraq, and the Commanding Officer of the NATO Role 3 Multinational Medical Unit and Commander of Task Force Medical South in Kandahar, Afghanistan. He's also served as a command surgeon of U.S. Pacific Fleet and was selected as the first Navy medical officer to serve as U.S. Central Command's surgeon, responsible for all health services support in theater as a sole advisor to the commander on medical matters. His flag tours include serving as the Deputy Chief Bureau of Medicine and Surgery for Operations Plans and Readiness, Commander Naval Medical Forces Atlantic, and as the Navy Deputy Surgeon General. 
The President has nominated for him second star an appointment to the grade of Rear Admiral, and in March he became the Acting Surgeon General of the United States Navy. His leadership is essential to continued force health protection, warfighter mission medical readiness, and strategical medical efforts of the world's greatest Navy. We're privileged to have him here with us today to share his thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest of honor today, Rear Admiral Darren Vai. Get the short version the next time. Hey, good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing? All right, rough crowd, I can tell. I told my staff coming in today, so you all, I know the skipper won't let you, but you may have to laugh and have a little bit of fun with us today. It's an exciting day for you. But uh, Captain Alcorn, thank you for that kind introduction. Um, I did tell my staff that my goal today was to be the best ODS graduation speaker you all have ever had. I think being a one one I can probably accomplish that, but what that also means, I have the potential of being the worst graduation speaker you've ever had simultaneously. But uh, graduates of ODS class 24010, sincere pleasure for me to be here with you all today to help mark your next step as a commissioned officer in the United States Navy. I'm excited to welcome you to the wardroom. I'm excited to call you shipmate. I know for the last five weeks, you've been required to pass through numerous physical, demanding, mentally challenging events. But being here today means you have succeeded and you have what it takes for your journey ahead. Before I go any further, I know we have many family members and friends in attendance. It's a great honor to see my friend and colleague Rear Admiral Klain celebrating with his nephew who is on his journey to be a Navy physician. But to successfully become a commanding officer, it's not something we accomplish on our own. So I'd ask you to join me in recognizing all those family members and friends in attendance today as well as your instructors who have supported you in achieving this important milestone. Let's have a round of applause, please. Today's ceremony honors our Navy's heritage and traditions while simultaneously celebrating and recognizing today's graduates are the strength of our Navy's future. You are each part of a tradition that links you to officers throughout the services and to our distinct past. After today, you and your classmates will always have your stories from Newport. The city, known to many for historic mansions, its beautiful scenery, sailing and music festivals, will always hold special importance to you. This is where your career as a Naval officer all started. It is where you will have begun a meaningful chapter of your life to the betterment of our service and our nation. To give you some framework of the elite membership you are joining, you are joining less than 1% of all Americans who have stepped forward to don the cloth of our nation's uniform and actively defend our freedoms. Collectively, you are part of a Navy that represents roughly one-third the population of the state of Rhode Island that we're in, yet you are part of a global force that produces combat-ready naval forces capable of winning wars, deterring aggression, and maintaining freedom of the seas around the world. This is a service of greater cause. Whether you plan to serve for one tour or to make the Navy a career, you will always be able to say that you stepped up and actively embraced the opportunity to serve our nation and a cause greater than yourself. And for that, I salute you. But I also challenge you to make sure your time in uniform counts. You leave here today prepared to be an officer in the greatest Navy the world has ever known. The better understanding of what it means to wear the cloth of our nation to lead the women and men entrusted to you based on your new commission and training. As you go off, privileged to lead those who serve with and under you, remember to be humble servant leaders. Be confident in who you are and what you have accomplished, but remember you can always learn and be better. We can learn from everyone in our organization, regardless of rank, position, or service, not just those whom we serve under. Hold the highest of standards and recognize that as China will soon outnumber us in size and scale of force, it is our ability to constantly assess ourselves, to embrace constant improvement, and identify where we fall short of mission through constant process improvement. We belong to a force designed to learn and adapt faster than our adversaries. I told you to be confident, as I've learned early in my career that unfortunately insecurity is one of the worst characteristics a leader can express. But while I said confidence, I did not say cocky nor arrogant. As you continue profession, 
and your career, remember, always be curious. Learn to ask questions differently. Identify potential bias in your thoughts and your assumptions and leverage and understand different opinions. What sets us apart from our competitors is our ability to rapidly learn, adapt, and win. As a chaplain said, always remember that mission one is every sailor, marine, and civilian, active and reserved, that will have the we will have the privilege of leading. This is what makes the operational readiness of today's all-volunteer force the most dominant naval force in the history of the world. Whether you're specialty will be serving with the Judge Advocate Corps as a chaplain, as a Chang, Nuke, Intel, SUPO, Information Warfare, Dentist, Nurse, Physician, or part of the Medical Service Corps, this is your mission. With a large percentage of our ODS graduates heading into the Naval Medical Department, I want to extend a special welcome and take a few minutes to talk about what's going on in Navy medicine. Anyone who has been around Navy medicine these last few years knows this is a transformational time for us. And that is the force that you are joining today. As our naval forces operate in battle space that is quickly growing in lethality, complexity, and scope, China is our most consequential strategic competitor and our pacing challenge. Russia poses an acute threat today and in the future. We are and will continue to partner with our allies to reinforce robust deterrence in face of this aggression. We are in a new age of warfare, one in which the integration of advanced technologies into new joint fighting concepts across all domains, air, sea, land, cyber, will determine who is victorious in conflict. The future operational environment will complicate military health care delivery, the dynamic array of medical challenges resulting from disease and non-battle injuries, new toxic chemicals, radiological hazards, bioengineered threats, and traditional combat casualties. Future traditional threats captured from a saying we had in Iraq, which was where the bangs keep, keep getting bigger, from high-end conventional forces combined with the threats of novel diseases naturally occurring and unfortunately human re-engineered will create new injuries and illnesses, resulting in greater impact to our fighting force and larger numbers of casualties. In Navy medicine, we are answering this call through continued integration with the Joint Force and the Naval Force resulting in alignment of our medical platforms across the maritime domain. We are force generating and deploying medical capabilities to meet demands of distributed maritime operations, DMO, expeditionary advanced operate, base operations, EABO, and littoral operations in contested environments, LOKI. The ability of Navy and Marine Corps team to prevail across this range of military operations depends on the, military, the medical readiness of every sailor and every Marine and demands that our Navy medical deployable units enhance their survival in that high-end fight. Again, in Iraq and Afghanistan, it was known that if you made it to a medical facility, you were going home alive. We owe that same outcome on tomorrow's battlefield. The lethality is ensuring our forces' survivability. That is Navy medicine's contribution to the fight. Our ability to meet operational needs of the fleet and fleet marine force is constantly improving. We're modernizing our culture, our organization, and our platforms to better support the National Defense Strategy, the Chief of Naval Operations Navigation Plan, and the Commandant of the Marine Corps' planning guidance. This effort is what we call optimizing the human weapon system. To accomplish this end state, let me give you a little insight on what we are doing and where we are going in Navy medicine. We must deliver manned, trained, certified expeditionary medical systems, or ExMeds, to the component and combatant commanders. Ex-Meds are our deployed medical units that support DMO in the fleet and across the fleet marine force. Our Ex-Med capabilities must be forward deployed and ready to fight now. These capabilities provide the modular, adaptive, and scalable capabilities to support the joint force and are necessary to win our nation's wars. Navy medicine has been actively developing, modernized, maintaining Ex-Med capabilities through the Joint Capability Integration and Development System based on closing those fleet gaps. An example of this capability can be seen in the deployment of the first seven-man expeditionary resuscitative unit forward deployed in Guam with their equipment and set, and most recently with a two-person in route care team deployed upon the USS Eisenhower. These capabilities represent the first of several XMED capabilities that will be ready to forward strategic locations to support our warfighters. 
As we look forward, our destroyers, amphibious warfare ships, new platforms like the UNNS Cody, which is EPF-14, and the future Bethesda-class expeditionary medical ship, named by the SECNAV Bethesda and Balboa, will carry these and other medical teams into the fight. Understanding that this focus of Navy medicine, some of you may ask, where is the medical treatment facility? How does it fit into the equation? Quite simply, they remain our foundation and are connected to each of these platforms. MTFs are the vital base units that drive our medical readiness. We work with the Defense Health Agency to advance the knowledge, skills, and abilities of our people to ensure that we will always be ready to fight in a joint war fight. We look at the MTF much as we look like a warship or a fleet marine unit with Navy medical personnel assigned to carry out a mission on that platform. We also recognize that beyond XMEDS, Navy Medicine also operates a global network of medical laboratories, environmental and preventive medicine units, as well as education and training activities that make vital contributions each day to our warfighter and makes our Navy and Marine Force stronger. Foundational for this effort is recognition that our people are our asymmetric advantage and our most valuable weapon system. Navy Medicine needs the right people in the right place at the right time and ready to execute our mission. For all of you, I ask, we need you to ensure that we are bringing the right people like you into our service, the right talent into the Navy and ensuring that they stay. Across the Navy and Marine Corps, I'm all ready to give you your first task order. Reach out to your peers to join you. I need you to recruit, ready, and help maintain skilled warfighters that provide unparalleled power projection to the naval force, whether it be in garrison, pier side, on, above, or below the sea, throughout all levels of competition, contest, and conflict. All of you are our biggest recruiters. I encourage each of you to share your stories with others on why you decided to join the Navy. And for as long as you wear this uniform and beyond, please be ambassadors for our service. As you begin your career as naval officers, you have enormous resources at your disposal. Use them. As I quote Mark Twain, the man who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. Use your resources. Congratulations, graduate. Best wishes for personal and professional success. I look forward to hearing of the great things that you do in the years ahead. I will simply conclude with bravo Zulu shipmates. I'll see you around the fleet. Thank you, Captain Alcorn and Rear Admiral Vi. At the conclusion of each ODS class, several students are recognized by their fellow classmates, as well as OTCN staff, for outstanding achievement during the five-week course of instruction. Ensign Amanda Neff, front and center. The Honor Student Award is presented to the officer who best demonstrates an overall excellence in the areas of academics, physical fitness, and military bearing. Consistently setting the example for his or her peers throughout the many challenges faced at Officer Training Command, the Honor Student Award goes to Ensign Neff. Lieutenant Dylan Holly, front and center. The Alfred Award is given to the officer who achieves the highest military grade derived from personnel inspections, room inspections, and general military bearing. This award is named after the Continental Sloop of War, the Alfred. Commissioned in 1775, the Alfred served as the flagship of native Rhode Islander Commodore Isaac Hopkins and is regarded as the birthplace of Navy medicine as it was the first ship to appoint a dedicated ship surgeon. Serving as a role model of Navy pride and professionalism, maintaining the highest military standards and providing inspiration to all, the Alfred Award goes to Lieutenant Holly.
Lieutenant Junior Grade Jacob Weaver, front and center. The Pickens Wills Peer Leadership Award is presented to the officer who personifies the highest standards of personal example, good leadership practices, and moral responsibility. Officers were nominated by their peers, and the winner was selected by the Officer Training Command staff. The winner of this award embodies the leadership traits and esprit de corps of Harriet Pickens and Frances Wills, the first two African-American women to commission in the United States Navy. Their courage and collaborative leadership paved the way for today's inclusive Navy. The Pickens Wills Peer Leadership Award goes to Lieutenant J.G. Weaver. Lieutenant Junior Grade Ashley Ireland, front and center. The Edy Award, named for Lieutenant Thomas Edy, United States Navy, recognizes the highest achievement in academic and military performance. Lieutenant Thomas Edy, who emigrated from Scotland and settled in Rhode Island, was awarded the Navy Cross and the Medal of Honor for his courageous efforts as a diver during the salvage of submarines SS-4 and SS-51 off the coast of Massachusetts. He was a member of the Southeastern New England chapter of the Retired Officers Association at the time of his death in 1974. In recognition of this accomplishment, in addition to a certificate of achievement, the Military Officers Association of America has also provided a three-year membership to the Edie Award winner, Lieutenant J.G. Ireland. For the past five weeks, the company guide on has been a symbol of spirit, dedication, teamwork, and unit identity. To symbolize the fact that these officers seated before you have completed their training, they will return their guide ons to their class chief petty officers, Chief Fire Controlman Daniel Thomas, and Chief Quartermaster Miguel Galarza. Class Officer Lieutenant Pardue will now deliver the reaffirmation of the oath of office. Would all military personnel in uniform please come to the position of attention.
the commanding officer of Officer Training Command Newport would like to present to you your newly reaffirmed Naval officers. Please rise for the playing of the service songs and the final dismissal. Officer Development School Class 24010. Upon graduation from Officer Development School, you are ordered to detach and report to your duty stations where you will assume your duties and responsibilities by order of Everett Alcorn, Captain, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, Officer Training Command, Newport. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony on behalf of the commanding officer, Officer Training Command Newport. Thank you for attending today's graduation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please remain behind the rope until all class photos have been taken. Additionally, following class photos will all